Good evening, welcome and hello. And today is the second part of our retro gaming series and I picked something that probably most of you will know who were alive in the early 90s or even a couple of years back when there was a special edition of this game released on many mobile platforms and I think also Steam. Well, that's of course Monkey Island 2, The Chuck's Revenge. This was my most favorite adventure game back in the day because it had awesome graphics, awesome sound, although at the beginning I didn't have a sound card, only PC speaker music, which was a bit annoying, but still pretty nice. And yeah, I uh, didn't even play the predecessor until a little bit later, and so I didn't get some of the in-game jokes. But it's a wonderful game, um, suited for older children or, of course, adults. And yeah, it's basically setting... The setting is a little bit of a comedy fantasy pirate world. There are some serious aspects about it, but it's mostly a comedy game. And when you turn it around, this is the German version. Back in the day, I also played the German version, which was translated by Boris Schneider. He later was known for writing for um, computer game magazines. Um, here are two awards from two German computer magazines for the game. Basically, this game raked in all kinds of awards because graphically and storytelling-wise and musically, it was so advanced, like pff, basically no other adventure game. And it was huge. I remember I had to delete a lot of stuff on our PC to get it to run, actually. Uh, the screenshots that we see here, I think, are also from the PC version. Um, it says here 256 color graphics with an asterisk, and it says on the Amiga only 32 colors. Yeah, that's, that's that. But we will, of course, take a look at the VGA version. But if we open it, well, you get a lot <laughs> on the... On the Amiga it seems we have here 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, um, tons of discs, tons and tons of discs, one megabyte RAM is needed on the Amiga, and basically 640k on, on the PC. Uh, you get a very, very small manual which explains everything that you need, but yeah, it's not that much. Plus, what do you have here? Here we've got a registration card, a warranty card. Plus, please don't make pirate copies. Yeah, we won't, we won't. Oh, neat. A Monkey Island 2 sticker. That's probably worth something. And a reference card with some of the key commands. And most importantly, most importantly, the Mix Mojo copy protection dial. Well, I think many of us students back then in school copied this by hand because uh, we couldn't take it apart or anything. And not everyone could afford these games because they were expensive. They were really expensive. And yeah, here, yeah, what do we have here? There's all the hit games by Lucasfilm Games. That's nice. Here's Zack McCracken. Do you see the prices in Deutschmarks? So the cheapest game here is a mission disc for 40 Deutschmarks. The more expensive ones are Monkey Island, VGA versions, 120 Deutschmarks. That's like 60 euros today, excluding inflation, which probably doubles the price. So yeah. It was really expensive. And what do we have here? It's still the original uh, invoice for 87 Deutschmarks, including shipping. Probably can't make it out here. Hope I censored this all right. So that guy didn't pay the 120 Deutschmarks. And there's even, I think, another catalog. Oh yes, I remember this this service here. They sold Amiga games. 
has all kinds of nice stuff in here. Oh, do you have here battle? Oh, he marked probably the games that he has or wants. Bundesliga manager, battle chess, beach volley, double dragon. Yeah, those all ring a bell. Populous too. Okay, so this definitely was worth um, looking in here. Yeah. However, we'll need this. This will we'll keep out. I don't need the diskettes. I do have a copy on my hard disk. And we can take a look at the game in Scumbium, because the 286 at the moment is in pieces. Um, a case will be arriving this week, uh, so you can look forward to an assembly video of some sorts. Then we will hopefully be also rounding up our retro PC series and have it more or less finished, pending some other enhancements that we want to do in the future. But yeah, so let's take a look at the actual game. Monkey Island 2 is an adventure game. That is, you play Guybrush Threeput, wannabe pirate and slightly juvenile hero. His goal in this game is to discover the mysterious treasure called Big Whoop. It is meant to be the greatest and most important treasure a pirate can find. But he has two problems. First of all, he can't get off off Scab Island, where he is stranded. The evil little pirate called Lago Le Grand is keeping everyone hostage on the island and he is extorting everybody. Once Guybrush gets rid of Lago, he realizes that Lago was the right hand of Guybrush's arch enemy, the ghost pirate LeChuck. Of course, LeChuck is reborn or rather reanimated when Guybrush hands over a piece of the deceased ghost pirate. All the more, Guybrush is now searching for Big Whoop, since it will be his only means of escape from the revenge of LeChuck. Hence, in part 2 of the game, Guybrush will hunt down the four map pieces that lead to the legendary loot. There are two more parts. First, Guybrush will be captured and imprisoned in Lichuk's fortress. But then he of course will escape, finding his way to the big treasure. I won't tell more here, because, well, if you do not know the game yet, I do not want to spoil it. And if you do know the game, you also know that you don't spoil it. Monkey Island 2 uses the well-known Scum engine that was introduced by LucasArts with the first adventure game, Maniac Mansion. The engine has been massively enhanced with 256 color VGA graphics, a revamped section of action verbs and a graphical inventory, showing nice little icons of the stuff Guybrush is carrying around. It is also one of the very first games to use the iMuse sound system which is exceptional in that it transitions the musical score smoothly from scene to scene, without any audible cuts. The game mostly only uses this soundtrack and is very light on digital sound effects, which can't be reproduced on the AdLab and MIDI cards anyway. Only the MT32 and Soundblaster cards offer a few digitized samples here and there, but this isn't necessary anyway. The atmosphere in this game is exceptional, as is the story and the puzzles. There are two modes to choose from, simple and standard. If you never played an adventure game, the simple mode should be good and gives you a lot of story, with a few lighter puzzles thrown in. The dialogues with NPCs is key to the game, as you gain a lot of crucial information about puzzles and about the game world and backstory from those interactions. Make sure to read those lines carefully. Being from 1991, the default distribution of this game is not a talky version. I think there were maybe CD talky versions and the special edition released a couple years back definitely has some voiceovers, but I never owned any of those. But again, this is not a big disadvantage for this game. The game is now 27 years old and I personally would say it has aged extremely well. The pacing of the story is good, the puzzles are logical and you can't maneuver yourself into any dead ends or die from a mistake. The musical score is better than any other adventure game of the time, and the graphics are extremely cute for being from a time when PCs couldn't handle more than 320 by 200 pixels. I give this game 10 out of 10 points. It is definitely my favorite adventure game. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Share, like and subscribe if you want, and have a good evening.